morning. It is Wednesday, September the 6th. Um, I'm doing it in the morning and on a Wednesday. Look at that. I'm all up on my game today. Um, so um, I kind of thought today, since we are in September, um, I thought I would do my yearly public service announcement um, on polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as PCOS. And um, one second. Benny Goodman is a little too loud for me this morning. Um, so September is PCOS Awareness Month, and this is something that I like to uh, I like to share information about it with people because uh, PCOS isn't always diagnosed right away in women, and um, because of that, a lot of women go through hell before they are finally diagnosed. Um, I'm one of those people. Um, so what PCOS is is it's a um, it's an endocrine, an, 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 uh, and it, and oh my goodness, words are going to be fun for me today. Okay, so it's a health problem that deals with your hormones, it deals with your physical body, it deals with um, your endocrine system, endocrine system. I do know words. Um, and, and, and just in general, it just kind of trashes your body until you find a way to get it under control, which you really kind of can't. Um, there's really no cure for PCOS. Um, PCOS, a, a lot of women will start um, when they're kind of in their young 20s generally um, is when a lot of people start to notice it. And PCOS has some, some pretty, pretty heavy markers, no pun intended, um, that can kind of tip you off that things are not right. Like your, um, and this is going to be a TMI for some of you guys out there, so sorry, but this is, this is what I do. Um, so your, your menstrual cycles may not be correct. Um, they may not be what they once were, or they may have never been right. Um, you may find that you're gaining weight rapidly for no real apparent reason. Uh, you have out of control acne, you have weird hair growth. Um, there's, there's a variety of things. For me, what tipped me off was my cycles were off and my weight gain. Um, I was cycling, like bicycling, and I've, I've generally carried a pretty good diet. Um, and I was gaining 15 to 25 pounds a year, and I couldn't figure out why. And my cycles were horrific. My, my like menstrual cycles were horrific. Um, and by horrific, I mean they were horrific. Anybody who knew me at that time knew what kind of hell I was going through. And it took a few doctors before I was able to actually get PCOS diagnosed as what the issue was. Um, PCOS will do some strange things to your body. Like not only will it cause weight gain, but it'll grow. It'll 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 cause things like um, masculine hair growth because one of the hormonal issues that's going on with PCOS is there is an increase of androgens in the female body. Um, and what androgens are is these are like the male hormones that balance out um, kind of the female hormones of estrogen. Um, women do make androgens, we're just not supposed to make them in such a high amount as what happens with PCOS. Um, and of course, you know, if you go by the name of PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, there's also the idea, the, uh, the uh, aspect of there being multiple cysts on the ovaries that crop up, pop, um, disappear, stay, um, but it's multiple cysts. And so what this does is this screws with fertility as well. So a lot of women who are having a hard time getting pregnant, um, a lot of times what they find is they're dealing with PCOS. There's cysts in the way that are either uh, preventing the release of eggs or preventing the proper growth of the eggs um, in the first place. But PCOS will mess with you and uh, it messes with your head, it messes with your body, it just messes with your emotions. Depression seems to be a big issue that comes along with dealing with PCOS as well. Um, because it can cause weight gain, it can also cause uh, other significant issues in your life like type 2 diabetes, um, heart conditions, um, high blood pressure. Uh, it can even mess with your uh, ability to deal with cholesterol and can give you issues with high cholesterol. Um, they think it's a hereditary thing. I don't think doctors are 100% certain on what PCOS is caused by in the first place. Um, in fact, for me, I started struggling with PCOS symptoms probably in about 1997 or 98. So we're looking at 20 years ago, um, easily. 
Yeah, that's 20 years ago. Uh, and at that time, there were very few specialists around that actually knew how to deal with PCOS. And so I would go through several doctors and several different types of testing. And let me tell you, when you start dealing with health insurance and the hoops that the health insurance wants you to jump through, there is some very, very invasive, invasive testing that they will do to diagnose whether or not you have cysts on your ovaries and whether or not those cysts are part of PCOS. And when you've seen several doctors and you've gone through the same invasive test several times over the course of three, four, five years, um, you become very educated in what it is that you've got and you, you learn how to educate your doctors as well um, in a way that they will hear you and not just shut you off. Um, for me, PCOS has actually wrecked a lot of my life. Um, I now weigh um, well over 350 pounds and have since um, 2000, uh, about 2010, um, maybe even a little bit before then. The only thing that has stabilized, stabilized my weight was a hysterectomy, a total and complete hysterectomy, um, during which time they removed not only my uterus, uh, what was left of my cervix from a previous surgery, um, my ovaries, my fallopian tubes. They also removed my appendix, which we discovered at that time was horribly, horribly scarred, probably because of the endometriosis that I also had going on at the same time. The endometriosis had adhered itself to not just my reproductive organs and my appendix, but also to parts of my bowel and my bladder, so that by the time the doctor had gotten in to remove everything, she actually had to touch pretty well every one of the organs, major organs that I have in my lower abdomen. Um, the words that she said to me when I came out of surgery and was in recovery um, that really brought home how serious the situation was for me was, I don't understand why you didn't have cancer. She says, you should have had all of this removed five years ago. When I had my surgery, I was 35 years old. I had been asking for five years from my um, primary and gynecological doctors to have a hysterectomy since about the time I had turned 30, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't approve it because of my age. Hysterectomies in young, quote-unquote, childbearing women are not recommended. And it's not just because we're childbearing women, and that's women's job to bear children, and, and it takes away your ability to have reproduce, but... There's actually significant health risks to going into a surgical or premenopause when you're in your 30s. And part of that includes hardening of the arteries, uh, which happens when you hit menopause naturally. Women's arteries tend to be more flexible than men's arteries because they have to be. When we're pregnant and we're in the process of reproducing, our arteries have to be able to be flexible to allow for the different types of blood flow that happens while we're pregnant. Um, so when we go into menopause, our body has decided that we're done reproducing. Those arteries no longer need to be uh, as flexible as they once were, and so they start to harden. Um, they start to get stiff. Um, many aspects of a woman's body start to stiffen up and not lubricate properly, um, and this is the cause of menopause. And this is what happens when you go into a surgical or a premenopause, an early menopause, is your body starts to... Um, your 35-year-old body, your 40-year-old body starts to take on characteristics of a 60-year-old body. Um, and that's okay. That was a risk I was willing to take. Um, what I was not anticipating was that within two years of my hysterectomy, I would go from having relatively normal numbers with my, um, my glucose, my blood sugars, my um, cholesterols, my, my blood pressure and everything, I went from having really pretty textbook numbers to being full-blown type 2 diabetic. Um, I have high cholesterol now, and I have um, um, high blood pressure. So I'm on medication for all three of these things at this point. I'm not on insulin. I'm fighting to stay off of in insulin. Um, what I also did not realize at the time, and I don't know if my doctor realized it, or if she just saw that I was so determined to have the hysterectomy that she wasn't going to argue with me. But what I didn't realize was PCOS does not go away with a hysterectomy. Yes, the ovaries are gone. Yes, the cysts are technically gone. But because this works on your endocrine system, endocrine system, God, my words today. Because it's a hormonal issue, um, it's still there. It's still there. 
Um, the ability for me to lose weight is extremely, extremely difficult. Um, I've stabilized since my surgery. I've not gained a single pound. Um, I've not gained a single pound since my high level. I have about a five pound window, but I think most people have about a five pound window that they work in. So every now and then I'll lose a couple of pounds when I'm not feeling really good and I'm not eating or, you know, I've been super busy and, and haven't really been stopping to do things. Um, sometimes I'll put on a pound or two within that five pound window, but I've never gotten any heavier than what I was at my surgery, but I've not gotten any lighter either. Um, fatigue. I deal with a lot of fatigue. Uh, depression has actually gotten a lot worse. Instead of being a seasonal issue, uh, depression is now an all year issue that I fight and I struggle with and I don't want to medicate. Um, I, I eventually probably will have to medicate it because it's getting worse progressively. Would I go back and uh, not do the hysterectomy? Absolutely not. I would absolutely have it done again. Um, for no other reason than, forgive me, the blood loss alone. Um, that was horrific. It was, it was really bad. Um, there's less pain in my body now than what there was prior to my hysterectomy. There would be times when I would go to, say, the grocery store, and my husband and I would be getting groceries, and it'd be something very mundane and very casual, and all of a sudden I would be doubled over in pain because I'd have a couple of cysts pop. And there is no pain quite like having an internal cyst pop on you. Um, I mean, I'm sure there is. Kidney stones, I'm sure, don't feel really good. Guys getting kicked in the jimmy, that probably doesn't feel real good either. Um, but it's, it's a sharp, sharp shooting, stabbing pain. It's a really horrible thing. Um, I don't appreciate the hair growth and the hair loss, the irony of that. Um, you know, I get, I get male pattern hair growth now, but I'm also getting male pattern hair loss. Um, I've always been very proud of my hair. I've had to change my, um, I've had to change my point of view on what I think is beauty in my world um, because there is no part of the way I look now that I'm actually pleased with. And I feel that my hands are very tied because of it. Um, it is what it is, uh, you know, and you deal with it. But I like to, I like to try and... Um, when I, when I have women come around my world, when I have women in my world that talk about things like irregular cycles or heavy cycles or painful cycles or women that look like me shape-wise or women that complain about weight gain and they're athletic people but they're gaining weight like nobody's business or they talk about pain or fatigue or depression or hair growth or any of these things, these single symptoms, I, I talk to them. You know, do you have this? Do you have this? Are you finding this is happening with you? If so, go find a specialist. Go talk to somebody and see if you can get tested for PCOS because the sooner you catch it and the sooner you understand that that's what you're dealing with, a little more relief can come into your life. Um, maybe not necessarily a physical relief, but an emotional relief. When Dan and I first got married, we wanted to have kids, and so we tried, and we would get pregnant and miscarry and get pregnant and miscarry and get pregnant and miscarry. And I didn't realize because I was miscarrying so quickly, I didn't realize for the first couple that that's what was going on. Um, and because of how bad my cycles were in relationship to the PCOS that I already had and didn't know I had, I didn't realize that that massive amount of blood loss actually was a miscarriage because it was that kind of a massive amount of blood loss was fairly common in my world. You know, and there was an extenuating circumstance, too. Um, what I didn't realize was I'd had a precancer removed when I was um, very young um, <clears throat> from my cervix, and I had the doctor that removed that did a really bad job of removing it. And so I didn't realize until several, several years into trying to get pregnant that I was never going to hold a pregnancy to term anyway. But the miscarriages that I was having weren't necessarily related to that. Um, but it was very frustrating for us to feel like we could never get pregnant. We were doing everything in our power to do so um, outside of like IVF and, and fertility drugs. We were doing everything that we could. And it, it was more of a relief after finding out that I had PCOS uh, to know that, to know why it was that getting pregnant wasn't working out for us. Um, so, 
Yeah, so like I said, it's 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 September, it's PCOS Awareness Month. Um, this is the month when, you know, we kind of talk about these issues and we help educate people, and particularly women. Um, and, you know, men, don't think that you're completely free and clear of this either, because being a hereditary issue, PCOS can be carried down through men as well. Um, of course, men aren't going to be dealing with PCOS, but the children that they produce, the girls that they produce, they can. It's possible. So, you know, be aware of be aware of whether or not this is something that's in your family, too, before you go about and start having little kidlets and muffins all over the place. Um, so I think I think that's going to be my my uh, I think that's going to be my public service announcement for the day. Um, oh, look at this. I'm looking at the list. So here's, here's some symptoms. I'm going to read a list of symptoms that I found here. Um, and this is from the PCOS Awareness Association. Okay. Um, with PCOS, women typically have, uh, uh, acne, excessive hair growth, weight gain, problems with ovulation, which include, um, Infertility, because of not ovulating. Um, infrequent, absent, and or irregular menstrual periods. Hirsutism, which is increased hair growth on the face, chest, stomach, back, thumbs, or toes. Cysts on the ovaries. Acne, oily skin, or dandruff. Weight gain or obesity, usually with extra weight around the waist. Male pattern baldness or thinning hair. Patches of skin on the neck, arms, breast, or thighs that are thick and dark brown or black. Skin tags, excess flaps of skin in the armpits or neck area, pelvic pain, anxiety or depression, sleep apnea. Um, so these are all different things that you might want to watch for. So there's my fun video for the day. Isn't that a fun video? Um, but another reason I like to share about this is because it, it helps people kind of understand why I look the way I do and why I am the way I am. Um, you know, it's it's really easy for people on the outside to look at someone like me and say, you know, put down the hamburger and go take a walk and just lose some weight. And it's really not as simple as that. Um, my husband will attest to this. I'm probably one of the healthier eaters he knows, um, which isn't necessarily saying a lot. I do eat healthy. Um, my soda pop consumption is fairly minimal. My potato chip and junk food consumption is fairly minimal. Um, I eat a lot of vegetables. I, I don't eat a lot of carbs. I really don't like a lot of carbs. Um, so my pasta, my bread, that's all fairly minimal. So I do all of the things. And I've been to dietitians that, you know, have talked to me about this. And when we, when we come away from our appointments and I come in with logs, like three-month logs of my diet, and they look at them and go, huh, hmm, yeah, you do do pretty well, don't you? You know, or my exercise. My exercise can always be more. Everybody's exercise can always be more. But, uh... You know, it's, it's frustrating when you feel like you're doing everything you can and everything you can is never even anywhere close to good enough. In fact, everything that you can do doesn't even put a dent in the situation. Um, and that can be hard and that can be depressing. And it, 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 it goes across many, many aspects of my life. Um, it's not just my physical health. It's my physical appearance. I hate the way I look. It's my physical appearance and clothing. I can't go to the store and shop because of the size. I, I, none of the stores really have clothing that I can just buy. I have to buy online. Um, you know, when you, when you can't dress in your own style or you can't find clothing that makes you feel good, you really, you, you don't feel good. You don't, you don't appreciate who you are and you lose the parts of yourself that are uh, special and neat and unique. You lose those parts because you're so focused on the other parts of you that you hate so much, um, like the carcass that you walk around in and the clothes that you have to put on it. Um, and I'm digressing again. The long and the short of it is, don't assume that because you have a large woman that you have somebody with bad eating habits and bad exercise habits. Um, if you're going to get that personal with them, talk to them, find out if they're not, you know, maybe dealing with a bigger health issue. Um, help them out, support them. If you have somebody that you know, that you care about, that's got PCOS and they're dealing with the same kinds of things that I'm dealing with, 
be kind, be loving, um, you know, treat them like you treat your skinny friends. Uh, that's, I mean, I, I hate to put it that way, but treat them like you would treat anyone else who is beautiful and, and respected and loved. And because it's hard to feel, it's, it's, it can be very hard to feel loved when you're a large woman. Um, because you don't feel pretty on the inside, you don't feel pretty on the outside and you have a hard time um, you have a hard time seeing when other people see you as pretty. So there's my public service announcement. Let's go have a cry somewhere other than on the camera. Um, September is PCOS Awareness Month. Share this with other people. Um, you can go to pcosaa.org uh, or .com. I, can't, I don't remember which one it was. Um, for more information, um, it will give you links to, um, again, the symptoms, diagnoses, uh, things that you can do to, to help, um, help some of your symptoms, um, how, how to find help and how to help the people that you love find help. Um, so with that, I'm going to close. Um, have a good day. Have a good weekend. I'll see you guys next week.